The Zorgax's screams filled the galactic council chambers, reverberating through the marrow of every human's bones. The insectoids had seconds before complete extinction at the mandibles of the Kraycox slavers. Genocide blinked on a hairline trigger. The great races all turned away, fearful for their own hide. Only trembling humans dared meet the pleading gaze of the Zorgax delegate. Dr. Draxel clattered to the podium on shell-shocked legs. He gargled through his grief to beg aid for his dying trillions. The Velnari examined their claws. The Rekthar inspected the floor. No one offered solace or salvation. Dr. Draxel thanked them anyway. He bowed a farewell and shuffled off to share the grave of his people. The Zorgax would die alone, abandoned by uncaring stars. Then a voice rang out, No! Admiral John Hawkins of Earth stood tall. The Zorgax will not fall, not while humans still draw breath. He slammed a fist on his console, eyes blazing. Earth sends her fleets. We fly now for Zorgax. The chamber erupted. The Velnari snarled of war and expense. The Rekthar quoted policy and risk. Both reviled humans as young, reckless fools. Hawkins silenced them with a glare that could core stars. We go now. He leapt down, grabbing Dr. Draxel's arms. Come, my friend, those cowards can cower. Humanity rides to Zorgax. If the human fleet failed, the Zorgax died. If the human fleet fell, humanity faced the Krakox alone. One misstep doomed all. But no human hesitated. They had a friend to save. Admiral Hawkins stormed out of the Galactic Council chambers, his face set like stone. He barked orders into his comms as he marched. This is Admiral Hawkins. I need the deliverance prepped and ready to fly ASAP. Load every fighter, shuttle, and combat mech we've got. And send word through the fleet. Any captain with the guts to join up, get your ass to the rendezvous point. Dr. Draxel scurried to keep pace with Hawkins' long strides. His antennae quivered with barely contained despair and flickering hope. Admiral, I cannot express the depths of my gratitude. When your ships arrive... How many can we expect in relief? Hawkins grimaced. He knew the numbers would be slim. The bulk of Earth's forces were tied up patrolling the far reaches. Most wouldn't get the call in time. But he gripped the doctor's shoulder. However many we need to get the job done, we'll bring the fleet's finest. You have my word, Wilt. We'll save Zorgax or die trying. The Admiral made good on that promise. In record time, he'd mustered a task force of humanity's most advanced warships. At the vanguard loomed the flagship USS Deliverance, a beast of a vessel bristling with enough firepower to glass a moon. Hawkins had called in every favor he had to secure her for this mission. As the small fleet hurtled through warp space, Hawkins paced the bridge restlessly. Captain James Thompson watched him from the command chair, fingers steepled. Thompson was a seasoned veteran, his face weathered by decades of hard vacuum. He'd been Hawkins' first choice to command the deliverance. We'll be dropping out of warp in two minutes, Admiral, Thompson reported. Scans show multiple Kraycock signatures in orbit. Looks like their ground forces are already knee-deep in the capital. Hawkins swore they were cutting it close. The moment we emerge, I want a full torpedo volley, bracketing spread, like those bugs up like fireworks. Thompson nodded. He leaned over to bark targeting orders at the gunnery crew. The ship shuddered as it dropped into real space. Alarms blared. The viewscreen filled with nightmarish vessels, all spikes and jagged edges. Krakox raiders. Fire! Thompson roared. The deliverance shook as her powerful mass drivers hurled waves of ordnance. The human fleet followed suit unleashing storms of missiles and searing beams of directed energy. The void boiled under their onslaught. Krakok's ships crumpled like foil. Hulls split under the merciless barrage, spewing flame and molten shrapnel. But the bugs didn't flee. They surged forward, spitting plasma and disruptor pulses. The human ships danced between the blasts. Their advanced shields sparkled and held. Point defense lasers swatted incoming missiles from the black. Keep hammering them, Hawkins shouted over the chaos. We need to clear a path to the surface. The deliverance shuddered as a disruptor beam clawed at her flank. Consoles sparked. Crewmen yelped and clutched smoking hands. 
but the ship endured. Her guns never fell silent. One by one, the Krakok ships broke apart. Escape pods burst from the wrecks as the raiders fled. Third's torn it, Admiral, Thompson called. Orbital space is clear. Our shuttles have a straight shot to the surface. Hawkins felt a fierce grin split his face. Then let's not keep our friends waiting. Prep drop pods for launch. I'll lead the ground teams myself. Dr. Draxel stepped forward, eyes shining with unshed tears. I'm coming with you. My people need to see a friendly face in their darkest hour. Hawkins clasped the doctor's hand. Wouldn't have it any other way. Let's go kick some Krakok's ass. The Krakok's had underestimated the humans. Their quick regroup was a testament to that. They had been caught off guard by the ferocity and skill of Earth's finest, but they adapted with the ruthless cunning of apex predators. Admiral, we've got incoming. The sensor officer's voice cracked with panic. Multiple bogies closing fast. Hawkins spun to the tactical display. His eyes widened. A swarm of red blips flooded the screen, pouring from the remaining Kraycock ships like angry hornets from a kicked nest. Drones, he spat. Thousands of them. The Krakoks had unleashed their mechanical plague. Each bot was small, no larger than a dinner plate, but they flew in perfect formation, a choreographed cloud of death. Their tiny lasers scythed through the void, stitching glowing scars across human hulls. The fleet's point defenses roared to life, filling space with crisscrossing beams, drones shattered by the dozen, by the hundred. But always more came, an endless tide hatched from Krakok's bays, Consoles wailed as the small craft tore through shields like paper. The deliverance bucked and heaved. Explosions chained through her decks. Crewmen screamed. Bulkheads melted and ran like wax. Pull us back, Thompson barked through the mayhem. All ships fall back to secondary positions. The human vessels limped into a defensive sphere, their weakened shields overlapping in a desperate bid for survival but the drones buzzed and harried them, always seeking gaps to exploit. On the surface, things had gone from bad to worse. Hawkins ducked as a plasma bolt seared overhead, close enough to blister paint. Around him, Zorgak's soldiers crumpled under the onslaught, their carapaces cracked and weeping ichor. Keep fighting, boys, he roared over the chaos. Hold the line! It was a brave stand, a futile one. The Krakok's elite had sprung their ambush with expert savagery, their blades dripped with human and Zorgax blood. At their head strode General Kazrak, a towering mantis in ebony armor. His eyes glittered with cruel intelligence as he scythed down a human lieutenant. Hawkins raised his rifle to return fire. Too slow. Kazrak's claw shot out, fast as thought. It crunched through ceramic plating like a knife through tin. Hawkins screamed as he felt the bladed digits pierce his chest, scraping bone. Kazrak jerked him close, mandibles clacking with laughter. Foolish ape, the Krakok sneered. Your kind has no place in the stars. This is but your first lesson in the price of defiance. With contemptuous ease, Kazrak hurled Hawkins away. The Admiral felt something crack wetly as he slammed into rubble. His vision swam red. Each breath was agony, bubbling and thick. Admiral, Dr. Draxel was suddenly at his side, pressing shaking hands to the ruin of Hawkins' chest. The doctor's face was streaked with despair and Zorgak's blood. Please, hold on. Hawkins coughed, tasting copper. The ship, he croaked, have to tell Thompson. In orbit, things were unraveling fast. The drones had breached Deliverance's engine room. The cruiser drifted, venting gouts of flame. All across the line, human ships flickered and died under the unrelenting assault. Thompson slammed a fist on his armrest, eyes wild. They couldn't hold. Even now, the Krakok's command ship loomed behind its veil of drones, watching its handiwork with cold arrogance. Watching. Thompson straightened. A desperate idea crystallized in his mind, sharp and bright as starlight. He keyed the fleet-wide comm, his voice hardened to ice and lasers. This is Captain Thompson. I'm assuming command. All ships prepare to execute emergency plan Sigma. Divert all power to forward batteries and engines. The bridge crew looked at him in shock. They knew that plan, knew what it meant. Thompson met their gazes unflinching. 
We're going to take out the head of the snake. May God have mercy on our souls. Miles below, a bloodied hand raised a crackling comlink to pale lips. Admiral Hawkins forced out his words through a haze of pain, each one an iron weight. Give em hell, James. See you on the other side. Captain James Thompson gripped the controls of the captured Krakok shuttle, his knuckles white beneath his gloves. Behind him, a dozen of the Deliverance's finest sat in tense silence, checking and rechecking their weapons. They all knew the stakes. Failure here would doom the Zorgaks and likely humanity with them. Thompson guided the insectoid craft towards the looming bulk of the Krakok's command ship. Its jagged hull seemed to swallow the stars, a maw of obsidian hunger. He swallowed hard. Steady, he murmured as much to himself as his crew. Just like we planned, get in, plant the charges, get out, quick and clean. The shuttle shuddered as it passed through the command ship's kinetic barriers. For a moment, Thompson feared they'd been detected, but no alarms blared, no plasma bolts seared their hull. The Krakoks had bought their disguise. They docked without incident, the shuttle's gangplank mating to the enemy airlock with a hiss of pressurized air. Thompson was first out, rifle raised. The corridors were eerily silent, lit by pulsing organic lights. The air tasted of copper and ozone. Move out, Thompson whispered. Deck plans show the computer core is three levels down. They advanced cautiously, hugging the bulkheads, checking corners. Each shadow seemed to crawl with hidden threat, but they encountered no resistance. The ship's crew seemed occupied with the battle outside, too busy to notice the human serpent sliding through their den. Or so it seemed. As they neared their goal, a cold laugh echoed from the darkness ahead. Thompson felt his blood run cold. He knew that voice, had heard it taunt them over the comms. General Kazarak stepped into the light, his ebony armor drinking in the dim glow. His eyes glittered with cruel amusement. Did you truly think your feeble subterfuge would deceive us, apes? The Krakok's leader hissed. We allowed you to come this far. I wished to watch you die myself. Thompson snarled, bringing his rifle to bear. You'll choke on those words, bug. But even as he fired, Kazrak was moving. The general flowed around the plasma bolts like liquid shadow, his claws blurring. Thompson barely had time to shout before those talons found his men, shearing through armor and flesh with equal ease. His team fought like lions. Rifles chattered, grenades burst in starbursts of fire. But Kazrak was a whirlwind of death, unstoppable. One by one, Thompson's soldiers fell, until only he remained, battered and bleeding. Kazrak stalked forward, mandibles dripping red. And so it ends, the general purred. Your species will make fine cattle for the Krakox, but you, I think, will be my personal trophy. Thompson spat blood, raising his rifle in trembling hands. He knew it was hopeless, knew this was where he'd die, so far from Earth's green hills but he'd be damned if he'd go quietly. A roar split the air, defiant and fierce. Thompson's heart leapt. He knew that voice. Admiral John Hawkins charged from the shadows, a squad of marines at his back. His wounds were bandaged, his face pale, but his eyes blazed with unquenchable fury. Get away from my captain, you oversized cockroach, Hawkins bellowed. His rifle bucked, stitching a line of holes across Kazrak's thorax. The general staggered, hissing in pain and rage. Thompson surged to his feet, galvanized. Together, he and Hawkins pressed the attack, plasma and lead sleeting through the air. Kazrak fought like a demon, but even he could not stand against their combined skill and fury. With a final despairing screech, the general fell, his carapace shattered and oozing. Hawkins stood over the twitching corpse, his grin fierce as a wolf's. "'You all right, James?' he asked, offering a hand. Thompson clasped it, hauling himself upright with a wince. Never better, sir. Thought you were still in sickbay? Hawkins shrugged. What can I say? I'm a fast healer. Sides couldn't let you have all the fun. Together they limped to the computer core. Thompson slapped the charges to the humming servers, his smile grim. Time to give these bastards a taste of their own medicine, he growled. Let's blow this joint to atoms. They barely made it back to the shuttle before the explosion started. The command ship bucked and heaved, 
alarms howling like damned souls. Gouts of flame erupted from rents in its hull, venting atmosphere and Krakox into the void. Taz Thompson gunned the engines, racing the blossom of the monstrous ship's death. He heard Hawkins chuckle over the roar. Hell of a fireworks show, eh, James? the Admiral rasped. Almost pretty in a God Almighty we almost died kind of way. Thompson just shook his head, too spent to laugh. But as the shuttle screamed towards the distant glitter of the human fleet, his heart soared. They'd done it. Against all odds, they'd struck a blow the Krakox would never forget. The Zorgax would live to see another dawn. And humanity? Humanity had just proven to the galaxy what they were made of. Thompson had a feeling this was only the beginning. The Krakox fleet fled, their ships scrambling to escape the burning wreckage of their command vessel. Escape pods jetted from the disintegrating hulks, the bugs within no doubt praying to whatever dark gods they served. The human fleet let them go, too spent to give chase. They'd won, battered, bruised, but unbroken. On the bridge of the Deliverance, Admiral Hawkins slumped in his chair. Exhaustion etched into every line of his face, but his eyes shone with fierce pride as he watched his crew work, patching wounds and putting out fires. They were a damn fine bunch, the best Earth had to offer. The comm pinged. Hawkins tapped the screen, mustering a tired smile as Dr. Draxel's face filled the display. The Zorgax looked haggard, his carapace cracked and stained, but he beamed at the sight of Hawkins, relief and gratitude pouring off him in waves. Admiral, Draxel said, his voice thick with emotion. I cannot find the words to express the depths of my people's thanks. You saved us from certain annihilation. We are forever in your debt. Hawkins waved a hand. We did what was right, Doc. No one should face genocide alone. I'm just glad we got here in time. Draxel chittered his antennae waving. Your bravery will not be forgotten, and I have a proposal, a small token of our appreciation. The Zorgax have developed advanced medical technologies far beyond anything your species possesses. We would like to share this knowledge with Earth as a gesture of friendship and alliance. Hawkins' eyebrows shot up. He'd seen the miracles Zorgax medicine could work firsthand, had felt the cool tingle of their healing gel knitting his wounds, Technology like that could save countless lives back home, revolutionize hospitals and emergency response. That's incredibly generous, Doctor, Hawkins said slowly. We'd be honored to accept. I'll have my science teams coordinate with yours for the knowledge exchange. Draxel bowed, his gratitude palpable even through the screen. I look forward to a new era of cooperation between our peoples, Admiral. The screen went blank and Hawkins leaned back, mind whirling with possibilities. But his musings were interrupted by a cough from the communications officer. Sir, we're being hailed. It's the Galactic Council. They're requesting permission to come aboard. Hawkins frowned. Now they showed up after the fighting was done and the dead counted. He was half tempted to tell them to piss off back to their safe little hidey holes, but he was a diplomat as well as a soldier. He couldn't afford to burn bridges, not when Earth was still so new to the galactic stage. Grant them permission. Let's see what they want. He straightened his uniform as best he could, wincing as his wounds twinged. He'd have to hope the counselors wouldn't mind a bit of blood and grime. The airlock cycled, and the representatives strode onto the bridge, their robes immaculate and expressions grave. Hawkins recognized a few of them, the willowy Velnari, the hulking Rekthar, Races that had sneered and scoffed when humanity begged for aid. Admiral Hawkins, the Velnari spoke, her mellifluous voice echoing in the sudden silence. The Council has come to... apologize. We were wrong to dismiss your warnings, wrong to leave the Zorgax to their fate. Your species showed true courage and compassion this day. You saved the lives of billions. The Rekthar rumbled agreement, his craggy face twisted with something like shame. The humans stood tall when the rest of us faltered. You have earned the respect and admiration of the galactic community. The Council pledges to stand with Earth in any future conflicts. Your enemies are now ours. Hawkins nodded slowly, letting the weight of their words sink in. This was momentous, a sea change in Earth's standing on the cosmic stage. 
but he couldn't quite bring himself to feel celebratory, not with the screams of the dying still fresh in his ears. I appreciate the council's words, he said carefully, but I didn't do this for glory or political gain. My people believe in doing what's right, even if we have to stand alone. I hope in the future we won't have to. The representatives shifted, but there was a new glimmer of respect in their eyes. The Velnari inclined her head. Well said, Admiral. The galaxy will not soon forget the courage of humanity. We look forward to a new age of fellowship between your people and ours. With a few more platitudes and promises, the councillors took their leave. Hawkins watched them go, feeling the weight of history on his shoulders. The battle was won, but he knew the war was far from over. The Krakoks would be back, thirsting for revenge. And there were other threats out there lurking in the dark spaces between stars. But for now he allowed himself a moment of pride as he gazed around the bridge of his battered ship. They'd done the impossible today, his little band of heroes. They'd stared into the abyss and refused to blink. They'd shown the galaxy what humanity was made of. He leaned forward, keying the shipwide comm. Attention all hands, this is the Admiral. I want to express my deepest gratitude and admiration for your incredible bravery and sacrifice today. Against all odds, against an implacable foe, you held the line. You saved billions of lives. You proved to the galaxy that when the weak are threatened, when the innocent cry out, humanity will answer. I have never been more proud to call myself one of you. Cheers and applause flooded the channel, a cacophony of joy and relief from every deck. Hawkins grinned, feeling the weight lift from his shoulders. They'd earned this moment. He turned to Thompson, noting the weariness and triumph warring on his old friend's face. Set course for home, Captain. I think we could all use a bit of R&R, &R, and I don't know about you, but I could murder a stake right about now. Thompson barked a laugh. Aye, aye, sir. Though you might have to settle for reconstituted protein paste, I hear the galley took a few hits during the fight. Hawkins groaned theatrically. The sacrifices we make for the greater good, eh, James? As the deliverance swung about, her battered hull pointed towards the distant gleam of Sul, Hawkins allowed himself to hope. For the first time in his career, he thought humanity might have a real shot at finding their place among the stars. They'd earned the galaxy's respect today, bought it with blood and fire, and if the Krakoks or any other threat thought the people of Earth would be easy pickings, well, they'd learn to their sorrow just how wrong they were. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.